Located in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius, Herculaneum Italian, Ercolano, was an ancient Roman town destroyed by volcanic pyroclastic flows in 79 AD. Its ruins are located in the commune of Ercolano, Campania, Italy. Herculaneum is one of the few ancient cities to be preserved more or less intact, with no later accretions or modifications. Like its sister city, Pompeii, Herculaneum is famous for having been buried in lava and ash, along with Pompeii, Stabiae, Aplantis and Boscariel, during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. Unlike Pompeii, the heavy blanket of lava that covered Herculaneum carbonized and thereby preserved wood and other organic-based materials such as roofs, beds, doors, and food. Although most of the residents had evacuated the city in advance of the lava, the well-preserved skeletons of 300 people who perished near the seawall were discovered in 1997. Although it was smaller than Pompeii, Herculaneum was a wealthier town than Pompeii, possessing an extraordinary density of fine houses with, for example, far more lavish use of colored marble cladding. History of Herculaneum Ancient tradition connected Herculaneum with the name of the Greek hero Heracles Hercules in Latin and consequently Roman mythology, an indication that the city was of Greek origin. In fact, it seems that some forefathers of the Samnite tribes of the Italian mainland founded the first civilization on the site of Herculaneum at the end of the 6th century BC. Soon after, the town came under Greek control and was used as a trading post because of its proximity to the Gulf of Naples. The Greeks named the city Heracleion, Heracleion. In the 4th century BC, Herculaneum again came under the domination of the Samnites. The city remained under Samnite control until it became a Roman municipium in 89 BC, when, having participated in the social war, war of the Allies, against Rome, it was defeated by Titus Didius, a legate of Sulla. After the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, the town of Herculaneum was buried under approximately 20 meters 50 to 60 feet of ash. It lay hidden and largely intact until discoveries from wells and underground tunnels became gradually more widely known, and notably following the Prince Dilbuff's explorations in the early 18th century. Excavations continued sporadically up to the present and today many streets and buildings are visible, although over 75% of the town remains buried. Today, the Italian towns of Ercolano and Portisi lie on the approximate site of Herculaneum. Until 1969 the town of Ercolano was called Racina. It changed its name to Ercolano, the Italian modernization of the ancient name in honor of the old city. The inhabitants worshipped above all Hercules, who was believed to be the founder of both the town and Mount Vesuvius. Other important deities worshipped include Venus and Apollo, who are depicted in multiple statues in the city. Topic. The eruption of AD 79 The catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius occurred on the afternoon of 24 August AD 79. Because Vesuvius had been dormant for approximately 800 years, it was no longer even recognized as a volcano. Based on archaeological excavations and on two letters of Pliny the Younger to the Roman historian Tacitus, the course of the eruption can be reconstructed. At around 1 p.m. on 24 August, Vesuvius began spewing volcanic ash and stone thousands of meters into the sky. When it reached the tropopause, the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere, the top of the cloud flattened, prompting Pliny to describe it to Tacitus as a stone pine tree. The prevailing winds at the time blew toward the southeast, causing the volcanic material to fall primarily on the city of Pompeii and the surrounding area. New studies have been carried out on the victim's skeletons and it has been established that some of the minerals stored in the bones are preserved. Since Herculaneum lay to the west of Vesuvius, it was only mildly affected by the first phase of the eruption. While roofs in Pompeii collapsed under the weight of falling debris, only a few centimeters of ash fell on Herculaneum, causing little damage but nonetheless prompting most inhabitants to flee. During the following night, the eruptive column which had risen into the stratosphere collapsed onto Vesuvius and its flanks. The first pyroclastic surge, formed by a mixture of ash and hot gases, billowed through the mostly evacuated town of Herculaneum at 160 km per hour 100 miles per hour. A succession of six flows and surges buried the city's buildings, causing little damage in some areas and preserving structures, objects and victims almost intact. 
However, in other areas there was significant damage, knocking down walls, tearing away columns and other large objects. A marble statue of M. Nonius Balbus near the baths was blown 15 meters away and a carbonized skeleton was found lifted 2.5 meters above ground level in the garden of the House of the Relief of Telephus. Recent multidisciplinary research on the lethal effects of the pyroclastic surges in the Vesuvius area showed that in the vicinity of Pompeii and Herculaneum, heat was the main cause of the death of people who had previously been thought to have died by ash suffocation. This study shows that exposure to the surges, measuring at least 250 degrees Celsius 482 degrees Fahrenheit even at a distance of 10 km from the vent, was sufficient to cause the instant death of all residents, even if they were sheltered within buildings. Archaeology In 1709 the digging of a deep well revealed some exceptional statues at the lowest levels which was later found to be the site of the theater. The Prince Dilboeuf purchased the land and proceeded to tunnel out from the bottom of the well, collecting any statues they could find. Among the earliest statues recovered were the two superbly sculpted Herculaneum women now in the Dresden Sculpture Ensemble. Major excavation was resumed in 1738 by Spanish engineer Roque Joaquín de Alcubierre. The elaborate publication of La Antichita di Herculano, the Antiquities of Herculaneum, under the patronage of the King of the Two Sicilies had an effect on incipient European neoclassicism out of all proportion to its limited circulation. In the later 18th century, motifs from Herculaneum began to appear on stylish furnishings, from decorative wall paintings and tripod tables to perfume burners and teacups. However, excavation ceased once the nearby town of Pompeii was discovered, which was significantly easier to excavate because of the thinner layer of debris covering the site 4 meters as opposed to Herculaneum's 20 meters. Barker noted in his 1908 buried Herculaneum, by the orders of Francis I land was purchased, and in 1828 excavations were begun in two parts 150 feet apart, under the direction of the architect. Carlo Benucci. In the year 1868 still further purchases of land were made, and excavations were carried on in an eastward direction till 1875. The total area now open measures 300 by 150 perches 1510 by 755 8 meters. The limits of the excavations to the north and east respectively are the modern streets of Vico di Mare and Vico Ferrara. It is here only that any portion of ancient Herculaneum may be seen in the open day. From 1927 until 1942 a new campaign of excavations was begun by Amadeo Mayeri, which exposed about four hectares of the ancient city in the archaeological park that is visible today. Excavation resumed briefly in the town in 1980-81 on the ancient shoreline following which the skeletons in the boathouses were found. From 1996 to 99 the large area to the northwest of the site was excavated and exposed, including part of the Villa of the Papyri, the Northwest Baths, the House of the Dionysian Reliefs and a large collapsed monument. This area was left in a chaotic state and from 2000 to 7 further work on conservation of this area was done. Many public and private buildings, including the Forum Complex, are yet to be excavated. The site The buildings at the site are grouped in blocks insulae, defined by the intersection of the east-west and north-south streets. Hence we have Insula 2, Insula 7 running counterclockwise from Insula 2. To the east are two additional blocks, Orientalis I and Orientalis II To the south of Orientalis I lies one additional group of buildings known as the suburban district. SD. Individual buildings having their own entrance number. For example, the House of the Deer is labeled INS IV. 3. Topic. The House of Aristides INS 2. 1. The first building in Insula 2 is the House of Aristides. The entrance opens directly onto the atrium, but the remains of the house are not particularly well preserved due to damage caused by previous excavations. The lower floor was probably used for storage. Topic: The House of Argus ins 2 2. The second house in Insula 2 got its name from a fresco of Argus and Io which once adorned a reception room off the large peristyle. The fresco is now lost, but its name lives on. 
This building must have been one of the finer villas in Herculaneum. The discovery of the house in the late 1820s was notable because it was the first time a second floor had been unearthed in such detail. The excavation revealed a second floor balcony overlooking Cardo III, as well as wooden shelving and cupboards. However, with the passing of time, these elements have been lost. Topic: The House of the Genius Inns II, III. To the north of the House of Argus lies the House of the Genius. It has been only partially excavated but it appears to have been a spacious building. The house derives its name from the statue of a cupid that formed part of a candlestick. In the center of the peristyle are the remains of a rectangular basin. Topic: The House of the Alcove in IV. The house is actually two buildings joined together. As a consequence of this it is a mixture of plain and simple rooms combined with some highly decorated ones. The atrium is covered, so lacks the usual impluvium. It retains its original flooring of opus tessellatum and opus sectile. Off the atrium is a biclinium richly decorated with frescoes in the fourth style and a large triclinium which originally had a marble floor. A number of other rooms, one of which is the apsed alcove after which the house was named, can be reached via a hall which gets its light from a small courtyard. Topic. College of the Augustales Temple of the Augustales or Priests of the Imperial Cult Topic. Central Thermi The Central Thermi were bath houses built around the 1st century AD. Bath houses were very common at that time, especially in Pompeii and Herculaneum. Per common practice, there were two different bath areas, one for men and the other for women. These houses were extremely popular, attracting many visitors daily. This cultural hub was also home to several works of art, which can be found in various areas of the central Thermi site. Topic. Villa of the Papyri The most famous of the luxurious villas at Herculaneum is the Villa of the Papyri. It was once identified as the magnificent seafront retreat for Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesoninus, Julius Caesar's father in law. However, the objects thought to be associated with Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesoninus correspond more closely to a greatly standardized assemblage, and cannot indicate, with certainty, the owner of the villa. The villa stretches down towards the sea in four terraces. Piso, a literate man who patronized poets and philosophers, built a fine library there, the only one to survive intact from antiquity. Between 1752 and 1754 a number of blackened unreadable papyrus scrolls were serendipitously recovered from the Villa of the Papyri by workmen. These scrolls became known as the Herculaneum Papyri or scrolls, the majority of which are today stored at the National Library, Naples. The scrolls are badly carbonized, but a large number have been unrolled, with varying degrees of success. Computer-enhanced multi-spectral imaging, in the infrared range, helps make the ink legible. There is now a real prospect that it will be possible to read the unopened rolls using X-rays. The same techniques could be applied to the rolls waiting to be discovered in the as-yet unexcavated part of the villa, eliminating the need for potentially damaging the rolls by unrolling them. A team spent a month in summer 2009, making numerous X-ray scans of two of the rolls that are stored at the French National Academy in Paris. They hoped that computer processing would convert the scans into digital images showing the interiors of the rolls and revealing the ancient writing. The main fear, however, was that the Roman writers might have used carbon-based inks, which would be essentially invisible to the scans. That fear has turned out to be fact. They had hoped that rescanning the rolls with more powerful X-ray equipment would reveal the text. However, subsequent X-rays have still produced nothing legible. Still, the hundreds, possibly thousands of scrolls still buried at the site may yet prove to have legible text someday. As of 2016, research and experimentation has recovered more scrolls and it is suggested that new techniques will allow more to be read without unrolling them. Topic. Skeletal remains. In 1981, under site administrator Dr. Giuseppe Maggi, excavations initially turned up more than 55 skeletons 30 adult males, 13 adult females and 12 children on the beach and in the first six boat chambers. 
Because earlier excavations had revealed only a few skeletons, it was long thought that nearly all of the inhabitants had managed to escape, but this surprising discovery led to a change of view. The last inhabitants waiting for rescue from the sea were killed instantly by the intense heat, despite being sheltered from direct impact. The study of victims' postures and the effects on their skeletons indicate that the first surge caused instant death as a result of fulminant shock due to a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit. The intense heat caused contraction of hands and feet and possibly fracture of bones and teeth. Further excavations in the 1990s revealed a total of at least 300 skeletons huddled close together in 12 arches facing the sea and on the beach, while the town was almost completely evacuated. The Ring Lady, see image, named for the rings on her fingers, was discovered in 1982. Chemical analysis of the remains has led to greater insight into the health and nutrition of the Herculaneum population. Dr. Sarah C. Bissell was a physical anthropologist and classical archaeologist who played a prominent role in early scientific research at Herculaneum. Her pioneering work in the chemical and physical analysis of skeletons yielded new insights into the nutrition and health of ancient populations. This was considered groundbreaking and helped advance the field of paleotomography. Quantities of lead were found in some of the skeletons, which led some to speculation of lead poisoning. Also the presence of scarring on the pelvis, for instance, may give some indication of the number of children a woman had born. Casts of skeletons were also produced, to replace the original bones after taphonomic study, scientific documentation and excavation. In contrast to Pompeii, where casts resembling the body features of the victims were produced by filling the body imprints in the ash deposit with plaster, the shape of corpses at Herculaneum could not be preserved, due to the rapid vaporization and replacement of the flesh of the victims by the hot ash ca. 500 degrees Celsius. A cast of the skeletons unearthed within Chamber 10 is on display at the Museum of Anthropology in Naples. The most significant and extensive study of a sample of the skeletal remains of the Herculaneum victims is that published by Luigi Capasso in 2001. This study which employed X-rays has superseded the earlier work by Bissell. Topic. Issues of conservation The volcanic water, ash and debris covering Herculaneum, along with the extreme heat, left it in a remarkable state of preservation for over 1,600 years. However, once excavations began, exposure to the elements began the slow process of deterioration. This was not helped by the methods of archaeology used earlier in the town's excavation, which generally centered around recovering valuable artifacts rather than ensuring the survival of all artifacts. In the early 1980s and under the direction of Dr. Sarah C. Bissell, preservation of the skeletal remains became a high priority. The carbonized remains of organic materials, when exposed to the air, deteriorated over a matter of days, and destroyed many of the remains until a way of preserving them was formed. Today, tourism and vandalism have damaged many of the areas open to the public, and water damage coming from the modern Urcolano has undermined many of the foundations of the buildings. Reconstruction efforts have often proved counterproductive. However, in modern times conservation efforts have been more successful. Today excavations have been temporarily discontinued, in order to direct all funding to help save the city. A large number of artifacts from Herculaneum are preserved in the Naples National Archaeological Museum. A private-public partnership, the Herculaneum Conservation Project, has taken a lead restoring Herculaneum. In 2012, UNESCO's Director General praised Herculaneum as a model whose best practices surely can be replicated in other similar vast archaeological areas across the world. Photos Documentaries A 1987 National Geographic special in the shadow of Vesuvius explored the sites of Pompeii and Herculaneum, interviewed archaeologists, and examined the events leading up to the eruption of Vesuvius. A 2002 documentary, Herculaneum, An Unlucky Escape http colon slash slash www.doclab.it slash produzioni.php, based on a research of Pier Paolo Petroni, Giuseppe Mastrolorenzo and Mario Pagano. 
Co-production of Doclab Rome, Discovery Channel USA, France 3 Taxi Bruce, Spiegel TV, Mediator, 52 feet. A 2004 documentary, Pompeii and the 79 AD Eruption. TBS Channel Tokyo Broadcasting System, 120. An hour-long drama produced for the BBC entitled Pompeii, The Last Day portrays several characters with historically attested names, but fictional life stories living in Pompeii, Herculaneum and around the Bay of Naples, and their last hours, including a fuller and his wife, two gladiators, and Pliny the Elder. It also portrays the facts of the eruption. Pompeii Live, Channel 5, 28 June 2006, 8 p.m., Live Archaeological Dig at Pompeii and Herculaneum Marcellino de Bagas's 2007 documentary Herculaneum, Diaries of Darkness and Light, Onion Skin Productions A 2007 documentary Troja East Uberal, Offerstung MVESUV, Spiegel TV, 43 29 http terra xzdfde zdf inhalt 3 slash o comma one eight seven two comma seven one two two three oh seven comma o dot html secrets of the dead herculaneum uncovered as a pbs show covering the archaeological discoveries at herculaneum out of the Ashes, Recovering the Lost Library of Herculaneum is a KBYU TV documentary that traces the history of the Herculaneum papyri from the time of the eruption, to their discovery in 1752, to modern developments that impact their study. The Other Pompeii, Life and Death in Herculaneum is a documentary presented by Andrew Wallace Hadrill, director of Herculaneum Conservation Project. Pompeii, The Mystery of the People Frozen in Time is a 2013 BBC One drama documentary presented by Dr. Margaret Moonford. Topic notes Topic Further reading Brennan, B. 2018, Herculaneum A Roman Town Reborn. Sydney, Ancient History Seminars. Brennan, B. 2012. Herculaneum A Sourcebook. Sydney, Ancient History Seminars. Capasso, L. 2001. I Fujashi di Ercolano. Paleobiologia della Vitime del Arusian Vesuviana del 79 d. c. Roma, Lerma di Bretschneider Daner, J., ed. 2007. The Herculaneum Women, History, Context, Identities. Los Angeles, J. Paul Getty Museum. De Carolis, E., and G. Patricelli, 2003. Vesuvius, A.D. 79, The Destruction of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Los Angeles, J. Paul Getty Museum. Dice, J.J. 1995. The Town of Hercules, A Buried Treasure Trove. Malibu, C.A., J. Paul Getty Museum. Laser, E. 2009. Resurrecting Pompeii. London, Routledge. Pace, S. 2000. Herculaneum and European Culture Between the 18th and 19th Centuries. Naples, Italy, Electa. Pagano, M. 2000. Herculaneum, A Reasoned Archaeological Itinerary. Translated by A. Pess. Naples, Italy, T and M. Pagano, M., and A. Belasco, 2000. The Ancient Theater of Herculaneum. Translated by C. Fordham. Naples, Italy, Electa. Parazzi, M. E. A. 2000. Herculaneum, The Excavations, Local History and Surroundings. Naples, Italy, Electa. Scarth, A. 2009. Vesuvius, A Biography. Princeton, N. J., Princeton University Press. Wallace Hadrill, A. 2011. The Monumental Center of Herculaneum, In Search of the Identities of the Public Buildings, Journal of Roman Archaeology 24-121-160. References External resources Pliny the Younger's Letters on the Catastrophic Eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD to the Roman historian Tacitus from University of Arizona, Pliny the Younger, Letters 6.16 and 6.20 to Cornelius Tacitus and in Project Gutenberg, Letter LXV to Tacitus, Letter LXVI to Cornelius Tacitus. External links The Local Archaeological Authorities, Official Website Herculaneum Conservation Project, Official Website AD 79, Year of Destruction 62 Pompeii Earthquake Herculaneum Papyri Blogging Pompeii 
The Friends of Herculaneum Society The Philodemus Project will publish Philodemus's works on poetry and on rhetoric. Brigham Young University, Herculaneum Scrolls Herculaneum by Ian Dixon, Melvadius Macrinus Cougarni Herculaneum Uncovered Documentary produced by the PBS series Secrets of the Dead Purcell, N. R. Talbert, T. Eliot, S. Gillies. Places, 432,873 Herculaneum. Pleiades. Retrieved 8 March 2012, CS1 maint, multiple names, authors list link. Romano Campanian wall painting English, Italian, Spanish and French introduction. Herculaneum Uncovered, a conversation with Andrew Wallace Hadrill. Ideas Roadshow, 2013 Texts on Wikisource. How was Herculaneum destroyed? In Popular Science Monthly, Vol. 2 December 1872. Herculaneum. New International Encyclopedia, 1905. Herculaneum. The Nuttall Encyclopedia, 1907.